Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's New Year's Eve and it will be a flaky end to 2019. There will be a warm up as we start 2020. Paul Gross is in with your complete forecast. Also, a popular restaurant goes up in flames in Lyon Township. We'll have a live report from the scene. But we do begin with breaking news this noon. We are following two police situations on Detroit's west side. The first, police say that they are investigating a deadly shooting that happened on Archdale and Schoolcraft near the Southfield Freeway. Police are also investigating a situation in the area of Plymouth and Myers, so we will be watching for any new developments and have updates for you both here on the air and on clickondetroit.com throughout the afternoon. New at noon, an investigation now underway in Lyon Township after a restaurant catches fire. It happened this morning at the Lyon Cantina restaurant right there on Pontiac Trail in Nine Mile. Victor Williams joins us now live with more from the scene. And Victor, is the restaurant salvageable? I don't think so. As of right now, multiple crews are still here as of right now taking care of what they can with the building. The good news is that no one was here when the fire broke out. However, with the flames, the smoke and the water from the multiple fire departments, it looks like the building might have been a total loss. Multiple agencies came out to assist with the fire that broke out at the Lion Cantina Tuesday morning. The first wave of first responders reported seeing flames tearing through the roof above the kitchen. Units were starting to make an entry attacking the flames from the inside, but were told conditions worsened and those crews were pulled from the building instead. Since then, crews from Lyon, South Lyon, Green Oak and Northfield were among the multiple agencies fighting the flames from the outside. With the fire believed to have destroyed the building beyond repair, it's a sad day for South Lyon. As we're told by one longtime customer, the restaurant was a staple in the community. The canteen has been here for, I want to say, at least 10 plus years now. Extremely good business. Uh, it's going to suck for the community. Uh, it was just a, kind of like one of those staple restaurants. You know, we don't have too many good places in town that have been around a while, and it was one of them. And at this point in time, the cause of the fire is unknown, but investigators are working to get to the bottom of just that. Reporting live in Lyon, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, thank you. And our thoughts are certainly with the restaurant owners and the customers for that matter. Well, also here at noon, dozens of Iraqi Shiite militiamen and their supporters broke into the U.S. Embassy compound in Baghdad today. The mob was angered over deadly U.S. airstrikes that targeted the Iran-backed militia over the weekend. Let's get to NBC's Ali Arouzi. He reports President Trump is blaming Iran for the embassy breach and says that they will be held fully responsible. <laughs> Iraqi Shia militia supporters have broken down the U.S. Embassy gate door, stormed inside the compound as gunshots and sirens ring out and fires have been set. Now, earlier in the day, hundreds of protesters and Iran-backed militia fighters had assembled near the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad to condemn airstrikes that killed 25 of their fighters in Iraq. The protesters had initially held funerals for the fighters killed in the airstrikes in a Baghdad neighborhood. From there, they marched to the sprawling U.S. Embassy in the heavily fortified Green Zone. Initially, protesters shouted down with the USA, hurled water bottles, smashed security cameras around the compound, and hung yellow militia flags on the walls of the embassy. It now appears the situation has taken a much more violent and serious turn. An Iraqi security source tells NBC News that guards inside the embassy have used tear gas grenades to try and prevent the demonstrators from moving towards the main buildings inside the compound. President Trump sent out a tweet saying Iran killed an American contractor, wounding many. We strongly respond and always will. Now Iran is orchestrating an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. They will be held fully responsible. In addition, we expect Iraq to use its forces to protect the embassy and so notified. The Iraqi prime minister has also sent out a statement asking the protesters to leave the area. Ali Aruzi, NBC News, London. 
A Hamtramck family here at home has knocks on doors asking for help to find a missing loved one. The family of 25 year old Kame Lowe, they went door to door, passing out flyers in hopes that it will help them find her. Kame was or has been missing since December 17th. She was last seen leaving her home on Trowbridge near Kniff. Her family has not heard from her since, and Kame has not posted on any of her social media accounts since then either. The state of Michigan may take legal action against the company believed to be responsible for that green ooze that leaked onto I-696 in Madison Heights. The owner of the now shut down electroplating services was already sentenced to federal prison for illegally storing chemicals, but now he could face possible charges from a state investigation. This all comes amid plans to take soil samples to learn more about that green ooze. And meantime, the city of Warren has checked its drains and found no evidence of pollution. Police are working to find out why a brawl at a Detroit family dollar store started over the weekend. The violent fight was caught on cell phone camera. Two people, customers involved, say that it was all started when they tried to return an Atari game system. They tell us that employees claim there was a no return policy and that the employees started the fight. Detroit police say that they are trying to get people to talk to them about the fight before any possible charges will be filed. And now let's take a look outside after a morning of snow showers. We could see some sun perhaps. Let's get over to meteorologist Paul Gross and for Brandon with a look at our forecast for the rest of this New Year's Eve. Yes, and uh, we've had our uh, biggest snow since the Veterans Day snowstorm last month. In fact, today is only the fifth day this season where we've had more than a tenth of an inch of snow. So that's pretty noteworthy. So we had uh, three inches this morning in Davisburg, Shelby Township 2.7, two and a half there in Elba and Lapeer County. Garden City 1.3, Metro Airport 1.0 as expected. A little bit less to the south, a little bit more to the north. And right now, if you are heading outside, we have temperatures uh, right around 30 degrees, but wind chills are in the teens to near 20. So it's a cold one out there today. Now you see uh, areas north and south, you can see uh, of this band here getting like basically nothing. But this band here, uh, we're watching this very carefully because it has picked up some steam just in the past uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Howell's now down to a half mile visibility it means that's moderate snow. So that's accumulating snow. Lansing is uh, at a mile right now, but everybody else is you can see they're getting flurries basically. So temperatures not moving much this afternoon. We still have some of that snow. I'll be back with the New Year's Eve forecast in just a bit, Rhonda. All right, sounds good, Paul. Speaking of New Year's Eve, we are just hours away from the start of the new year. And once again, thousands of people are packing Times Square in New York City to watch the ball drop, counting down the final moments of 2019. And of course, as we all know, it is one of the world's most iconic New Year's Eve celebrations. So let's get to New York. And Chris Pallone is standing by from Times Square. <laughs> In New York's Times Square, the balloons inflated, confetti ready to fly, and the world's most famous crystal ball tested Four, and ready. Three, two, one, Happy New Year! For the Fitch family of Rochester, New York, a trip downstate to see in person one of the world's most iconic celebrations. Now that's what it's all about. That's why we're here. So the kids, hopefully, they're old enough now and they'll remember this forever. As usual, security will be tight. Times Square is probably going to be the safest place um, on the planet Earth on New Year's Eve because nobody else puts that kind of effort into an event like this. Thousands of uniformed and undercover police officers will watch over the crowds. No cars allowed anywhere near the area and spectators will be searched several times. It's so many people and it's so much going on, but I, I feel safe. I feel great. For some, the new year is just another day on the calendar. For others, it's a chance to reflect. I get a little melancholy uh, for the year that's passing, but I do try to get some resolutions and hopefully stick to them in, in the new year. And to dream. 2020 is going to be spectacular. Um, I'm going to be 40 in 2020, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make it a great year. Happy New Year! The stage is set. The countdown to 2020 is on. Chris Pallone, Local 4.
And if you're here watching me, that means you're not in New York to watch the ball drop. So we have something else you can do for the second straight year. Beacon Park right here in downtown Detroit next to DTE is going to be counting down the new year. And this is family friendly. It's for kids and you don't even have to wait until midnight. This is a family friendly event that's free and open to the public. It takes place from one until six o'clock this afternoon and it's at the park here in downtown Detroit. It's located right there where Grand River meets Cass Avenue and it includes a balloon drop, red carpet. There's going to be food trucks out there and lots of games and fun for the whole family. So you might want to take part. Looks like the weather's cooperating for it too. And they also have that big dome that's heated. So you should be good to go. It's going to be a lot of fun down there. Well, still to come, if you plan on bringing in the new year with booze, you may want to think twice, which you probably won't. But we'll tell you the steps that you need to take to avoid a trip to the ER tonight. But first, new information in that church shooting that took the lives of two people in Texas.